Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. In Hebrews 9 verses 15, we are told, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. He is the mediator. And by means of what? By means of death. He says, by means of death, for the redemption of transgressions that were under the first. He doesn't speak of transgressions under the new one. He speaks of transgressions under the first. Under the first. Not under this new one. So Christ becomes the, the mediator. He, he becomes the initiator of this New Testament. He initiates it. He dies on the cross. And rises up again. And initiates a new testament. Praise the Lord. Now, the word covenant in the Old Testament, which was, rec was written in the, in the Hebrew language, is the word berith. B-E-R-E-E-T-H. -E and it means, it means an agreement between two parties with every party having a part to, a part to play. You see that? It means a treaty. It means an agreement of two parties. Now, when you come to the New Testament, that word covenant is no longer written, written in Hebrew. The, the, the new was written in the Greek la language. And it has a completely different meaning. For example, from where I come from, if we say Ngima, in our dialect, Ngima means life. Amen. From where Samuel is coming from, if I say Ngima, it means what? It means Uga? Ugali. The same, same word. So the same, same word, covenant, it had completely two different meanings in those two languages. In the Old Testament, in Hebrew, it means a, an agreement between two parties with every partner having a part to play. In the New Testament, the word testament or covenant is the word diateka. Diateka. And it means the last dispensation which somebody makes concerning his wealth after he dies. No, no. The writings which somebody does concerning his wealth. That if he dies, this house will belong to so and so. This car will be given to so and so. This shamba will belong to so and so. That is the meaning of diateka. That is the meaning of covenant in the Greek language. That is the meaning of a testament which Jesus came to establish. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 9, where we were reading, let's move to verse 16. Hebrews 9 verse 16. He says this. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Do you hear that? A will. Jesus came to make a will for us. But the will is powerless until the right of the will is there. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross. To enforce the will. Jesus had to come and die on a tree or to die on the cross and he effects the will. He makes it now powerful. He makes it now effective. Praise the Lord. So in this testament, it is no longer I do this and God does this. In this testament, it's about what God already has done. Mine is to discover what has been written in the will concerning me. The will says by his stripes you are healed. You go and study the content of the will and you discover what the will says. Then you go and take that which has been written for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
That is what the will says. The will says, we are sons of God. Amen. We are sons of? That is why we are heirs and joint tears with Christ. Because we are sons. And the spirit of his son cries in us, Abba, Father. We are sons. No longer servants. No longer friends. We are sons of God. We have been born of God. That's why we can inherit what belongs to our father. Our father. So there's a very big difference between that testament and this testament. There's a very huge difference. That's why if you hear people preaching the Old Testament, it's because they don't know that we have come into a new one. They don't know they are limiting themselves into servanthood when sonship has been introduced. We are now sons of God. Not men of God anymore. Not servants of God anymore. We are sons. We carry the seed of the Father. We have been born of an incorruptible seed of the word of God. We no longer relate with God as servants who have to do things for him to keep us in the house. You know, a servant stays in the house as long as he's obedient and is doing what the master wants. That's how he stays in the house. But a son has been born in the house. Whether he disobeys, he's still a son in the house. But we don't encourage you to disobey. I'm just telling you that as a son, your status cannot change because of your behavior. You remain a son. But if you continue in the practice of misbehaving, you will miss a good chunk of your inheritance. If you continue in misbehavior as a son, you will miss a big chunk of your inheritance. You won't enjoy it. Hallelujah. So Jesus became the guarantor of this testament. This testament is not guaranteed on my prayer. Not guaranteed on my obedience. Or my sacrifices. Or my giving. Or my fasting. Or my commitment. This testament is guaranteed by Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 7 verse 22. It says Jesus has become the guarantor of a new testament. Praise the Lord. Do you understand the meaning of guarantor? Eh? When you go to a bank and you get a loan and they ask you for a guarantor and you give the details of a guarantor and he comes and he signs that he will guarantee the loan. Hello? That in case you fail to pay the loan, who pays? The guarantor. So in case my behavior fails, who is responsible? The covenant doesn't cease. Why? Because it is guaranteed not on me, on him. But today many Christians, they have guaranteed their salvation by their behavior. And they are being told, utakosa mbingu. Ukendolea hivi, utakosa mbingu. My friend, yon mbingu is not guaranteed on your behavior. Yon mbingu is guaranteed by who? Jesus. He is the one who is guaranteeing my entrance there. And my stay there. Not my behavior. Not my doings. Not my good offerings. Not my good tithes. Not my good prayer life. Hello. It is guaranteed on Christ himself. He is the guarantor. If I fail, he takes responsibility. If I am unfaithful, he remains fair? faithful. That's why this one has not ceased. It has never crashed like the other one. It has not failed. Like it is guaranteed on Jesus, not on me. But today, the preaching that is being preached out there, it's about you working hard to guarantee your entrance. Tia bidin de weze kuingia. Tia bidin de ufaulu. Tia bidin de mungu kuskie. Tia bidin ukumbukwe. Tia bidin usamehewe. Tia bidin ukubalike. That is the old system. Many Christians are no, are no longer enjoying Christianity. Why? Because they have taken the whole burden of guaranteeing the testament. They have become the guarantors. They are standing in the gap. 
They are praying for Kenya. They are the ones who are standing in the gap as mediators for Kenya. Let me tell you, my friends. We wezi, yu mziko tulishindwa nayo. Tulishindwa kitambo. Duesu wakaja. It is Christ who is the guarantor. It is him who guarantees our success. And the success of this covenant. So, the New Testament is a will which God has made for humanity. It is a will which God has made for us. And if you know it that way, Christianity becomes so interesting. It becomes so sweet. It becomes so peaceful. How na pressure? Mana mziko ondolewa. Sio we ambaye unagarantii wokovu wako. Ni Yesu anagarantii hiyo. So pressure imetoka. Hello? Na wakristo wengi wakijua hii, they will enjoy Christianity. It will no longer be a burden, it will be something to enjoy. It will be something to rejoice over. Haita kwa mziko jisi leo, hili mziko kwa watu wengi. Many Christians are struggling to walk. Eh? And they say, you know, the path going to destruction is wide and big. But the path going to life, it is very narrow. It was under the law. Under the law, it was very narrow. Because ungeweza, but in this era of grace, hallelujah, Isaiah says, I saw a highway. And it was a highway of holiness. And even if you are a fool, you cannot go astray. Imagine. Ata kuwa mchinga wezi potea kwe barabara. Mana iku guaranteed na mwingine siyo wewe. Ukristu siyo mzigo bana. Ukristu ni kitopotu inafaa tufraie. Tufraie. Siyo tuuzunike. Tukiwa tutaisau makosa na dhambi kila siku. Yani wea sikuyu, ukiamuka ni kutubu dhambi. Mchana ni kutubu dhambi. Jioni kutubu dhambi. Mkesha, wana hawa ni kutubu dhambi. Then what did Jesus do? Then dhambikani ya libeba. Ikiwa wewe kila siku umezibeba. Ni ipi ya libeba hiyo? Eh? Why did he have to die on the cross and say, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabaktani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was crying your, your cry. He was identifying with your cry. Where we cry every day, mungu wa meniacha. Mungu wa menisahau. That is exactly what Jesus was crying. Trying to identify with us. Amen. God never left him. God never ran away from Jesus at the cross. Paul tells us, God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. Not imputing sins on men. God took a front seat on Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Mungu alikuwa hata toroka apana alikuwa ndani ya Kristu. Hakuwa metoroka Hakumwepa Kristu sabi ya dambi. Apana. So we must understand that in this New Testament, in fact where we have read in Hebrews 9 verse 15, it speaks of the transgressions under the first. It doesn't speak transgression under the second. Why? Because in the second there are no transgressions. Hello? Jesus took it. To medunisha msalaba. Kama msalaba ni kama haikuwa na kazi ya mana ilifanya. Tu medunisha nguvu zake. Mana kila kitu mato kikuwa kwa gano lakale. Tu medunisha upia kwa gano ji. Tu medbeba laana, tu medzileta pande hii. Tu mechukua dambi, tu medzileta pande hii. Tu mechukua masadaka, tu medzileta pande hii. Tu mechukua zwi nini, tu medzileta pande hii. Tu mearibu kazi ya msalaba, kanisani. Sio kwenye bana disco, kanisani kwenyewe. Ndiyo kazi ya msalaba imewekwa kuwa duni kabisa. What did Jesus do? That is different from what Moses did. Where should a disciple of Jesus, filled by the Holy Ghost, having a heart of flesh, called a son of God, be still put in the same level as the disciple of Moses, who had a heart of stone, who never had the Holy Ghost? Hello? Who had to keep rules and commandments 
for him to qualify. Why are we being put in the same level? We are sons of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And John is emphasizing. Now are we the sons of God. Hallelujah. Now are we the sons of God. And it has not yet appeared what we shall be. But one thing we know. That when he appears. We shall see him as he is. For we shall be like him. How can you put the sons of God in the same level as those people in the wilderness who never knew where they were coming from, where they were going to, they were confused. You can't put us in that same level. We are spirit filled. Hello. We are born again. We have the seed of God. We have a divine nature. Hallelujah. We have what? A divine nature. We are partakers of a divine nature. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. We are partakers of a divine nature. Amen. This one is not a covenant with conditions. This one is a will. Where we discover what has been written about us. And we go and we possess it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We go and possess it. We go and take it. We take that healing. We take prosperity. We take success. We take peace. We take joy. Every blessing we take it. Because it is written for us. It is ours. Already written for us in our account. It is there deposited. It is us to partake of it. And walk with it. Hallelujah. There are no more rules of you do this to get this. No. We came from there many years ago. We are in another system. And it's good if you know it. That you may enjoy it. But if you don't know it, you won't enjoy it. Who may scare you? That's why most of Christians are kept in bondages. Bondages of trying to please God. To win the favor of God. They are trying to attain to that level. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God that everything the law wanted us to attain already has been fulfilled in us. Not by us. Paul tells us in Romans 8 verse 3 and 4 that Jesus became flesh. That he may condemn sin in the, in the flesh. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled where? In us, not by us. Not you to fulfill it. It has been fulfilled already in you. That's why you are a son of God. That's why God is not apologizing why he's living in you. Amen. He's not apologizing. He's not living tomorrow. He's so confident and so comfortable in us. Hallelujah. In the old covenant, it was the responsibility of man to look for a sacrifice and make sure the sacrifice was blameless. Make sure it was in order and it was to come and bring it to God and beg God to receive what? He sacrificed. The way Leopold Nambiwa to to Sadaka, but they would Nambiwa imwa magilie maji omba ili mungu aikubali Sadaka yako. Unambiwa omba ili mungu fainini aikubali. That is a system of the old. They could look for a sacrifice, offer it to God, and beg God to receive it. In this testament, it is God Himself who looks for a sacrifice. God searched around and he looked for a sacrifice and he found a perfect one. He found himself. And he offered himself as a sacrifice. And today, it is God who is begging men and asking them, believe in my sacrifice. Unaskia? It is God asking men to believe in his sacrifice. Not us begging God to receive our sacrifice. It is God asking men, now I have done it. Believe it. Take it. Receive it. The game has changed. Hello. We no longer chase for God. It is God chasing us. It is God who has come after us. It is God who is pursuing us. With his blessings. With his favor. With his goodness. It is the goodness of God that is now leading men into repentance. 
It is God chasing people. God coming after people. God knocking our doors. Leaving his house. Coming to our house. And he is knocking at the door of your heart. It is God who has come. Not us who are going to God. So if we know that, Christianity will be so, so, so much enjoyable. But if we are still embracing the old system, we shall be struggling and struggling and struggling and cursing God and telling God how life is impossible under this covenant. Because we are mixing issues. Amen. We are doing what? We are mixing issues. In this testament, we have been forgiven. In this testament, we don't forgive to be forgiven. Apana. Eh? Even our Lord's prayer, which Jesus spoke to his disciples, forgive us even as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Hello. That is still an Old Testament system. In this testament, Paul tells us that forgive one another even as you have been forgiven. Yani sambaza msama matari umepokea. Si watu usame ndi usamehewe. Apana, umesha samehewa, sasa unasambaza ile umepata. Hallelujah. Forgive even as you have been done what? Already forgiven. We are already forgiven. We are justified. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. I can never be a sinner and righteous at the same time. Hello. I am a saint. I am the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. Walk with that consciousness of how righteous you are. Walk with that understanding of how righteous you are. Of how blessed you are. Of how embraced you are. Of how justified you are. Of how forgiven you are. Of how you've been healed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. This testament is about what has been done. Not about what thou shalt do. Amen. The old is thou shalt. Thou shalt keep this. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt do. Here it is. It has been done. It is finished. It is fulfilled. Our giving is just in response to what God has given. Our prayer is just in response to what already God has done. Amen. Amen. Our fellowship is just in response to what God already has done. Our commitment is just in response to what God has. Hallelujah. It's like you find a family business where the father has worked so hard to raise this business. Then he brings his kid to the business. No, no. He doesn't bring them because he wants to pay them good salaries. Apana, he brings them because they are the heirs of that business. When those kids understand that and they take it, they even do better than the father. And the father is so happy when the kids are doing better. They come with new ideas, fresh innovations. And the company picks up even better. Not because they have been paid good salaries. But today, many Christians, they want to do things for God to bless them. Not knowing this company is theirs. It is a family business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The success of the, of, the, of, the, of the company, it is your success. Amen. The success of this ministry, it's your success. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are giving. is blessing the kingdom. It is also blessing your life. As the kingdom prospers, you prosper equally because you are a son in the kingdom. It is your house. It is your family business. Come with new ideas. Put them in this business. Let this business grow. It is our business. It is ours. Not workers. Amen. We don't serve here to be paid. Hello. We serve because we are sons in this house. We are partakers of this kingdom. We are part and parcel of it. Its success is our success. Are you there? Umeshika you. So don't wait for me to come here and begin giving you a list of curses for you to give money. No. Nikikupatia your list is because you don't know who you are. But if you know you are a son in the house, you don't need threats to give. You don't need threats to give your money or your services 
all your time, all your prayer. You don't need that anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. We are children of the kingdom. We are joined here with Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Joined here with who? Joined here with who? Joined here with you? Rise on your feet. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you for making us partakers of the divine nature. Thank you for making us hears and joined here, hears with Christ. Thank you because all that belongs to the Father belongs to us. Yes, my Lord. Thank you for blessing us this far. Thank you for helping us understand who we are. Thank you for giving us peace, peace of heart and peace of mind in Christ Jesus. We bless you, my Father. We give you praise because you have no memory of our sins. You have no memory of our sins. You have no memory. You say in this covenant, your sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. There is no memory of our sins. There is only a knowing of how righteous we are, of how forgiven we are, of how sanctified we are, of how embraced we are. Hallelujah, we bless you, Jesus. We give you honor, my God. We give praise and glory to your name. We lift your name above all names, Jesus. Your name is worthy to be worshipped, O oh God.